What is up, Assassination? It is Assassin4259 here, and welcome back to the infectious madness of Dr. Decker. We're right back where we left off with Dr. Assassin here. And we need to ask this lady why... What, like, what does she say when she shifts? So here we go, guys. Remember to leave a like for more of this, and let's get it. It's tricky. I mean... I'll sound exactly like Hilda's daughter, but I try and keep it vague because I don't become her. I don't know what she would really say. I, I say things like, it's okay, don't be scared, I love you mum, or I love you dad. But it doesn't really matter what their relationship's like because it's not really them. I always do the Disney version the best, most loving version. That's what my patients want to hear. And maybe deep down they know it's not the truth, but it's got to be better than the reality. Right. That's so true. Why bother shifting if patients know it's not the truth? Does it really matter if it isn't the truth? Isn't it worth it if it brings them peace? Tell me honestly, Doctor, do you really think that what I'm doing is wrong? Uh... I don't know. That's a hard one. I honestly don't know. Uh... <laughs> yes, shifting is wrong. No, shifting isn't wrong. I guess it isn't wrong because you're just bringing her more peace. So, no, it's not. Good. Because I really feel this is something I have to do. Good. Why did you give the locket back? You told me to. Well, not in so many words, but you said I shouldn't have kept them. Yes. And what with Terry going around telling everyone I stole them, I didn't feel like I really had any choice. The locket, the watch, the ring. But I kept the little bird Sarah Decker gave me. I wasn't supposed to mention her. <gasps> oh my gosh, who is Sarah Decker? Even though the last name makes it pretty obvious. Dr. Decker's mother. Mm. She was one of my first patients, but she died a while ago. Wow. How is Terry? Terry seems to have backed down since I gave the keepsakes back. Good. Actually, it doesn't seem like she's been very well. Not her usual self. Maybe she's got a bug or something. Hmm, interesting. Did you talk to Dr. Decker about Hilda? Dr. Decker didn't know about Hilda. I don't think I mentioned her to him. Okay. Why didn't you want me to know about Sarah Decker? It just makes things complicated, doesn't it? I knew Dr. Decker's mother before I started seeing Dr. Decker. She's dead, and now he's dead. I'm sure you're gonna have a field day with it. Right. Why did you say I'm not going to die soon? As far as I know, it only works on people who are close to death. That's the whole point of it. I have to hold their hand, and they have to think of the person, and they have to be near death. And those seem to be the three criteria. Okay, did you know Sarah Decker was Dr. Decker's mother? Yeah, that's the reason I came to see him. I knew she was dying, mm. but he refused to talk to me unless I booked a session, so I did. And well, here we are. Here we are! Yes, indeed! Why did Dr. Decker refuse to talk about his mum? I told Dr. Decker that his mum was dying, that he should see her before it's too late. But. He wasn't interested. Hmm. It wasn't like he hated her. It was just like... It wasn't important. He asked me to take care of it for him. He did send his assistant along to see her once. Sorry. Your assistant. Right. Okay. What did Dr. Decker mean by take care of it? It was about the second, third session we had. He said he could tell that I was a good person. 
that I wanted to help people and that I should think really hard about how I could do that. That's how I discovered shifting. Oh, so that's how you discovered shifting. Okay. I see. Got it. Was it Dr. Decker's idea for you to shift? I think Dr. Decker showed me something that was always there. I've always wanted to help people. I hate to see people suffer. I don't think Dr. Decker made me into a shifter, but I don't think I'd be doing what I'd do if it wasn't for him. His mum was one of the first ones I tried shifting for. Oh, shoot. Did you shift for Sarah? I didn't really know what I was doing that first time. I mean, I didn't actually expect anything to happen. I just thought, what would really help this woman? I thought maybe she would just imagine that he was there. But it actually happened. I changed into him. Dr. Decker. What? It blew my mind. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. I'm going to ask someone another question now. Hey, Mariana. Did you know anything about the paper spike? Because that's what we're on right now. Dr. Decker used to put my checks on that thing. I guess someone thought they weren't getting value for money. Yeah, I guess so. You mentioned checks? I actually don't have a lot of money. Sometimes a therapy check would bounce, but Dr. Decker would be okay with it. Oh, my checks are fine though, don't worry. Well, that's good. That's good. Do you have any money problems? I'm not broke. Men buy me drinks at bars, though. Sometimes I'll get away with not paying at restaurants. Isn't that how it is for everybody? Uh... I think. Do you often go to bars and restaurants? I mainly like drive throughs I don't like crowds, and I find it difficult to stay in the same place for too long. I guess I'm a fidget. Right. You dislike crowds, but visit nightclubs? Crowds at nightclubs and bars are different. The lights are dim. You can slink around without attracting too much attention. Ah, okay. Why slink? Sometimes I'll kiss a guy in a club. And then he just follows me. Oh. Wherever I go. It's creepy. Yeah. I don't want everyone seeing that. Yeah. I wouldn't want that for you either. Where do people follow you? They follow me. Wherever I go. Anywhere. Where do you think they follow me, Doctor? I don't know. <laughs> what happens after people follow you? It depends where they follow me. If they follow me home, they bang on the door for an hour or so, then leave. What? Other places, they just disappear. I don't see them again. What? What do you mean, they disappear? Well, they don't just disappear into thin air. I think they return to the place I found them. But... I've not run into the same person twice. Okay. Well, moving on, before you mentioned something beautiful. You've got a good memory, Doctor. Let's talk dreams. Sometimes I'll dream about a light. Deep in the ocean somewhere. I head towards it because it's warm. Glowing like a beacon. When I'm at the bottom, it's the most beautiful thing. Like, like a welcoming sun. Like I'm home. And then I wake up. Okay. Uh, we got some in the notes. Mariana wants me to guess where people follow her. What happens after they follow her? Okay, I already did that. Okay, we're good. Why a beacon? 
it's so beautiful, it calls me. It's like I'm in a trance. What does the dream mean, Doctor? Uh, hmm. Mariana's dream could mean many things. A metaphor for her current issues, searching for something, or maybe she's making it up. Hmm. Maybe the dream is symbolic. Maybe the dream is made up. Maybe the dream means you're searching for something. Yeah. I guess. I hate being in the same place for too long. Maybe I'm always searching for paradise or something. That could be true. That could be true. Yeah. Have you had any more blackouts? I've had no blackouts, and I haven't been to the beach since our last session. But I think I will today. Do you want to come with me to the beach? Uh, <laughs> Maybe someone should come with you to the beach. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Doctor, I think you're getting a little anxious. If you ever wanted to visit the beach, you can just turn up. It's not mine. Turn up! Turn up! How are you today? I'm okay. Thanks for asking. It's rent day, and I always feel a little blue on rent day. Oh. What's rent day? Even though I think I already know. Rent day is the day I pay rent to my landlady. Yep. Yep, I knew that. You're okay with men buying you drinks? It's just good manners to accept when someone offers to buy you a drink. I'm a very good-natured girl. Couldn't have said it better myself. Couldn't have said it better myself. Why are you good-natured? Don't you think I'm sweet, Doctor? Yes! I think you're very sweet. Yes, you're sweet. I think you're falling for me, Doctor. No, don't say that. Don't let that get in the way of helping me. I won't. No, I will definitely not let that get in the way of helping you. I'm a doctor. I am Dr. Assassin, okay? I can do what I can to help people. Do people ever follow you home? Yes, they follow me home. They're silent. It's like a trance. Uh, okay, do they follow you to bed? There was one guy. A real gym body. I let him into the bedroom, but nothing. Nothing I did would stop him just staring at me. It was creepy. I uh, got him to follow me outside, and then I just shut the door. <laughs> what? Okay. Talk to me about Decker. Are we still talking about him? Yes! And I thought you were just interested in me, Doctor. I am, but I'm also interested in Dr. Decker's murder. So, yeah. Did Decker visit you at home? Dr. Decker suggested home visits. I think he was probably checking up on his investment. You're not thinking of doing home visits, are you, Doctor? Um, yes, I'm thinking of doing home visits. No, I'm not thinking of that. That's good. I'm not sure I can afford any more of your time. <laughs> awesome. I'm going to go ask another person a question. All right? We'll be good. Bye, Mariana. I love you. All right. What else can you tell me about Decker, Nathan? How's it going, man? I've told you all I know about Dr. Decker. He started uh, out good, then turned a bit crazy towards the end. When you start giving people more problems as a therapist, that's a bit crazy. Yeah. What problems did Decker give you? I started out with depression. Now I seem mm. to repeat days. Even if you don't believe the repeat days, then I clearly have extra mental health problems that he's given me. Right, like the loop day thing you had. Why was Decker crazy? I think they possibly cursed other people, a bit like he cursed me. Sometimes you could see he was bursting to tell me about it, but he couldn't. He was ecstatic with power. Hmm. 
Interesting. How did he curse you? Ah, uh, the curse. Well, remembered. I was hoping he'd forget. It's gonna sound crazy. Dr. Decker said I would never be able to move forward until I came to terms with my grief. And so from this point on, I start to relive the same day over and over again until I made something of it. I believed it. Ah, oh, why did you believe Decker? I didn't want to believe him. I remember I said, you can't just say things and they happen. He laughed and laughed. I think he was going mad. He said he'd give me a demonstration. Okay, what demonstration? He held his hand outstretched and told me to look at the flame. There was no flame, and then there was. He was holding a flame in his hand that had come out of nowhere. Hello. And he tried to hypnotize me to make me forget it. Uh, uh, what the heck did I just see? There was an actual flame right there. Do you see that? You remember the flame even though he hypnotized you? I didn't forget seeing the flame. He wanted me to forget it, to forget it all, but I didn't. For whatever reason, he couldn't undo what he'd done. I was scared. I pretended like the hypnosis had worked. Wow. Why were you scared? I was scared what Dr. Decker would do to me if he found out I still knew. So I mm. had to play along, keep coming to the sessions, pretend I hadn't seen what he'd done. It was awful because I was suffering through the same days over and over again, but I couldn't talk to him about it because he'd know. Hmm. Okay. Well, how are you today? I burned the photos of Hannah. It didn't work. Oh. I suppose because the loss was superficial. The next thing I burned was the rocking chair. That worked. Oh. I've been getting rid of her stuff ever since. There was a day when I attacked a Salvation Army bin, but I gave in. What happened with the Salvation Army bin? I accidentally put Hannah's diary into a Salvation Army donation bin. They're like huge post boxes with a circular tray that makes sure things spill to the bottom. I tried to get in to get it back, but I gave up. Aww. Did you read the diary? I read the last few weeks of Hannah's diary a while ago. I must have accidentally dropped in some clothes for the Salvation Army bin. It's funny, because I wasn't going to read it. She said she'd fallen out of love with me. That she was going to break off the engagement. That she didn't love me anymore. I regretted it. Oh, that's so sad. What do you regret? I regretted that I mourned for Hannah so long. I regret the grief. I regret all the days I slept through because of it. Had I known she didn't love me anymore, things would have been different. I I'm a bit angry now. If I had that day over again, I'd I may just still pull out in front of the driver. Hmm. Wow. All right. Shall we talk about Hannah? Can we maybe not talk about Hannah anymore? Okay. And thanks for the dating advice, by the way. Yeah, you're you're very welcome. Did you follow my dating advice? You told me not to look for anyone else until I was ready. So I didn't. Good. I've just been sitting at home, reading Hannah's diary. Stewing. I ordered That's... a pizza. Nice girl delivered it. Uh-oh. Nice girl delivered it. Okay, we're good. All right, now it's my turn. Now it's my turn. Uh, do you know anything about the paper spike, Nathan? I didn't notice Dr. Decker had a paper spike. I haven't really seen more than a foot in front of me since Hannah died. Oh, okay. Why did Decker want you to forget? He'd become bored of me, so I got much of my insight from calls or messages he'd take during our sessions. Hmm. I think because he hypnotized me, he didn't want to play with me anymore. So I got basic therapist. Ah, what's a basic therapist? He told me lots of people get depression, to become more active, see more people. And although he wouldn't always be there to listen, Jaya would be. Oh, Jaya? Did you know Jaya well? Yeah, I talked to her quite a lot. I'm not sure how many days of that she'd remember. She seemed to care, which is more I can say for Decker. Wow. Notes! 
Nathan says he talked to Jaya a lot. I should ask her. Yes, I should. Did you kill Decker so you wouldn't have to suffer through repeat days? <laughs> what the crap? Tell me more about the pizza girl, yeah. It took a week of days to get that pizza girl to smile. Aww. And you know what did it? A tip, as much as the pizza cost. Wow. So money does make you happy. Uh, no. No, it doesn't. I'm not gonna ask that question, so I'm moving on. All right. Jaya, how are you today? I'm fine. I'm ready for my grief counseling. I emailed you Mariana's address. I don't know why you'd want it. I suppose you're going to start doing home visits now, like Dr. Decker? Uh, home visits? Why would I want Mariana's address? Doctor, if you don't want it, don't text me and ask for it. What? It's all right. I don't mind doing menial tasks for you. Someone has to do them. I asked for Mariana's address. I guess I did like her. Oh man, Assassin likes Mariana. Hey, calm down, comments. Comments, calm down. Hey, no, no. Home visits? Yes, Dr. Decker started doing home visits for Mariana. He said she couldn't concentrate properly in his office. I hope you're not thinking of doing the same thing. I need you right where I can see you. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm not. Are you spying on me? Shall we talk about grief today? Any news on Ben? Tell me about the paper spike. Anything else to share about Decker? Uh, any news on Ben? I think that's all settled now. Yay. We are agreeing to pay Ben £5,000 and he's agreeing not to say anything about what he saw. Wow, okay. What did Ben see? He thought he saw... A creature huh. coming out of Dr. Decker's mouth. Well, at least that's the reason he's given for not emptying the bins that night. Either way, it's not the kind of publicity that we need. Shiny, happy, sane people. Right. Okay. Anything else to share about Decker? Some mornings I come into work and still expect him to be here. Sometimes it feels like he actually is here, watching over me. Oh! We had a connection. It's gone now, though. You can't have a connection with the dead, can you? Not for too long, anyway. No, 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 not really. I should ask Mariana about Decker's home visits. Yes, that'll be the next day, I'm guessing, though, right? I'm guessing that'll be the next day. Uh, shall we talk about grief today? Oh wait, no, 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 what connection? Dr. Decker asked me to have dinner with him for Valentine's. I refused, obviously, because you don't sleep where you eat or something like that. But it was flattering, especially with competition like Mariana around. Oh, shoot. What did you do on Valentine's? I was at home on my lonesome doctor, like I said before. All right, all right, is Mariana competition? Sorry, I didn't mean I was competing. I was happy Mariana was going out with him. I didn't want to be romantic with him. We had a stronger connection than that. Wow, why was it a stronger connection? Dr. Decker and I shared some philosophy We'd both read The Cult of the Kinetic Mind, and we agreed with a lot of what it said. Have you read that book, Doctor? No. No, I have not read that book. I have not read it. In Cult of the Kinetic Mind, the author suggests that everyone is capable of psychokinesis, and that the cult leaders specifically had these powers that turned their followers into disciples. It's not a fun read, but if you're into psychology, it's a blast. Ah, cool. I got some in the notes. What is psychokinesis? Yeah, is psycho, what's psychokinesis? Psychokinesis is the ability to change the physical world without actually touching it, just by using your mind. It's not just about bending spoons. 
It covers all sorts of things like telepathy, telekinesis, telesabalas. Shoot me, I'm a Kojak fan. <laughs> There we go. He just got shot. Uh, do you believe in psychokinesis? Like I said, all those cool things are in Cult of the Kinetic Mind, apart from Kojak, obviously. If you ever get a patient who thinks they can change the world with just their mind, then duck. Just in case they can. But seriously, do a whole load of shrinking and make them better. Whether you believe in psychokinesis or not, you'll need to figure out your approach with those that do. Right. Right. Okay. Is psychokinesis common? No, not at all in my experience. Dr. Decker had an unusual number of patients who claimed psychokinesis. Either he'd been specifically looking for them or someone had been sending them. Right. Okay. What would someone send psychokinetic pa patients here? It's entirely possible that someone is targeting this practice with psychokinetic patients. To what end, I don't know. It's no coincidence that most psychokinetic patients are diagnosed as insane, or at least temporarily insane. It's a handy diagnosis if you're facing criminal prosecution, especially if it's for murder. Right, especially if it's for murder. Correct. What approach are you talking about? How do you make people who think they have special powers better? Do you remain passive and support? Encourage them? Take them away? Ah. Remove their powers, encourage their powers, be passive. Nothing in the notes, okay. Um... I don't know. Encourage their powers or be, be passive, I guess, right? Be passive. Things could escalate. Building trust is one thing, but at what cost? Ooh. Very well said, Jaya. Uh, okay, tell me about the paper spike. It's in that police report that I gave to you. You should really take a look at it. Right. I totally should. Does she need grief counseling today? Yeah, let's ask. Shall we talk about grief today? Grief is such a strange word if you keep saying it. Grief, grief, grief. It sounds like somebody's being whipped. And you're gonna ask me how I feel today? Uh... Yeah, I was. Alright, are you spying on me? Checks and balances, Doctor. Somebody needs to be watching the watchman, so to speak. Make sure you're helping, not hindering. Right. Right. Okay. So, now that we got all that, was Dr. Decker helping or hindering? He probably did his fair share of helping and hindering. He was definitely helping in the beginning, but then seemed to lose sight of things. Okay, uh, how did he lose sight of things? I think he was so overwhelmed by the patients he was getting. His curiosity just got the better of him. There was a definite turning point. Okay, what was the definite turning point? Somewhere around the time Professor Alderby turned up. That seemed to unsettle him. And then we had a flood of extra weird patients. I think it was all too much for him. I think I misjudged him. I hope you deal with it better. I will. Why couldn't Mariana concentrate in the office? Honestly, I think Dr. Decker had a bit of a crush on Mariana, or vice versa. I'm not really sure. There's some footage from their home sessions if you want to see them. Oh boy. <laughs> yes, show me the footage. That was a joke, Doctor. I guess we found our level. <laughs> Oops! <laughs> Oopsie! Okay, why did grief sound like being whipped? Oops, that was a strange thing to say, wasn't it? Whipped. Am I all whips and chains in the bedroom or dominant in the boardroom? Don't answer that, it's not a question. It's early days for a harassment suit yet. What with Ben's nervous shock already. Okay, what did you know about Dr. Decker's mother? 
Dr. Decker did send me to see his mother once. She was dying in a nursing home and he didn't want to see her. I remember him calling her a manipulative, evil old hag. You tend not to ask any more questions after that. Wow. Okay. Did you talk to Nathan much? I didn't really speak to Nathan that much at all. But I have this strange feeling that I know him really well. I can't quite put my finger on it. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Perse okay, I have to ask another person to quit. Who is this? Professor Warwick? Hey, man. Who are you? Uh, Professor Warwick, I'm a physicist. Where's Dr. Decker? Uh, Decker is dead. Is he really? Actually dead? Hmm? Not a worthy adversary after all, then. Uh, Decker was your adversary? Dr. Decker challenged me. He tried to use my theories against me. Quantum theories. Right. Okay, what theories? Do you really want to know? Yeah. Decker's eyes used to glaze over whenever we talked about that. He uh, didn't believe in quantum physics. As if it's something that you can optionally believe in. Well, it started with an experiment. Okay, what was the experiment? Have you heard of quantum suicide, Doctor? Uh, no, I haven't. Quantum suicide is a, is a thought experiment that tries to explain the many worlds theory. Uh, you're looking at me blankly. I can see that you don't understand. I, 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 I knew you wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> alternate universes. Essentially, if I were to shoot myself, then in some alternate universe, I'd still be alive. Mm. Now imagine if I could actually choose that universe. I'm taking a product off a supermarket shelf. Well, I simply applied that logic to something different. Huh. Interesting. What did you apply that logic to? Gambling. I set up an experiment whereby I would visit a casino and place a very large bet at a roulette table. Now, I would always bet on odd. Now, the results of this particular experiment were mundane. I won as many times as you would expect according to the laws of probability. But then, I changed a parameter. Huh. What parameter did you change? Quantum suicide required a loss of life to make it a realistic thought experiment. So, I simply upped the stakes. Now, every time I bet on odd, I would uh, place everything I had on that one spin of the wheel, and it worked. Well, for a while. Okay, why gambling? Why not gambling? My wife, Vanessa, left me for a neurosurgeon. She emptied our entire combined wealth into her barrister's wallet. I needed more money. Physics provided me with a solution. Ah, okay. Well, why did the experiment stop working? Dr. Decker killed it! And I can't get it back. Ooh, okay, sorry. What did Dr. Decker kill? Well, my theory, quantum gambling. If the stakes are high enough, you will win every time by simply shifting your consciousness into that branch that wins. It's tricky, but it can be done. <laughs> Dr. Decker didn't like that. He saw me becoming rich and powerful, and he hated that. That's why he proffered the hangman's paradox. Right. What was the hangman's paradox? Well, uh, imagine a judge sentences you to death. Uh -huh. and it will be Monday. Or Tuesday next week. But it will be a surprise. Well, which day do you think you'll be executed? <laughs> I don't know. Monday, Tuesday? What, what kind of qu What? Why would Decker hate you becoming rich and powerful? Honestly? Well, I think he feared quantum physics. He, he didn't like things being explained in terms of science. Almost as if he'd have preferred... Chaos. I see. Okay, tell me about your wife. We were married for 14 years, 7 months, and 3 days. Vanessa 
couldn't have children, at least that's what she told me. She grounded me in reality. I'm not complaining. It's probably what I needed. But part of me always thought that one day I'd achieve immortality through science and we'd be... It wasn't to be, though. Just because you didn't, just because you wanted children, right? Did it bother you that you could? Yes, this game is reading my mind. I love it. Well, yes, it bothered me, especially now that I find out that she's pregnant. Oh no, it wasn't a rocket scientist that was required, but a brain surgeon, it seems. I have considered putting that neurosurgeon onto his darkest timeline, but I'm not a killer. It would seem. Right. All right, Monday? Well, Monday does seem likely, yes. Because if you're still alive on Monday at midnight, then Tuesday won't be a surprise. But if you're sure that it's Monday, then that won't be a surprise either, will it? Decker tricked me. Ah. He tricked you. How did he trick you? He told me that sometime in the future I would lose a bet. That, that I would lose all of my money. Now, this didn't seem likely because I had quantum gambling on my side and it was working. But he unnerved me. He, uh, he made me doubt myself. And then it happened. What happened? Recently, I lost everything that I'd managed to build up since Vanessa left me. Oh, I see. What were you doing on Valentine's night? Uh, I was at a fundraiser for a charity called Mind Stretch Outreach. Don't know how I got roped into that, I can't remember. But it was full of uh, very clever children with bizarre outlooks on life. And Jaya. It was Jaya who asked me to go. Really? Okay, what's Mind Stretch Outreach? Right? It's full of poor kids with uh, very capable minds. I, I did give them a talk on quantum tunneling once and uh, they loved it. Not sure it'll put dinner on the table for any of them, though. Right. What's quantum tunneling? Oh, you're going to have to Google that, Doctor, I'm afraid. I'm not a walking Wikipedia. I'd love to tell you, but um, I am paying you by the hour. Maybe right. look up Schrodinger's cat whilst you're there. Yeah, okay, but how well did you know Jaya? Oh, she's Dr. Decker's lovely assistant. I, I imagine she's your lovely assistant now. Yeah, she always uh, smiles and makes me a cup of tea before a session. <laughs> that smile. Uh, which reminds me, um, my session. Can we talk about my problem now? Okay. Yeah. We'll definitely talk about your problem in the next video. So with that being said, thank you all so much for watching. You guys are the best and only Assassination family on YouTube. Going big and going strong. I love you all, and if you're new, be sure to subscribe to the Assassination family today. I'd be honored to have you. And as always, I'll see all of you guys in the next video. Assassin4259, out. And huge thank you to Wales Interactive for the copy. It means a lot. Alright, take it easy, guys.